In thy tender care And take us for heaven To live with, live with thee there Away, away in a manger In a lonely manger, in a lonely manger, in a lonely manger, in a lonely manger, Jesus lies in a lonely manger. They tell me in a lonely manger that those three wise men in a lonely manger followed the star to find in a lonely manger where my Jesus was laid in a lonely manger. In a city gallery, in a lonely manger, in a lonely manger, that Jesus is there, in a lonely manger, in a lonely manger. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody besides me glad to be in the number for one more time? I mean, sure enough, could have been the other way but God allowed our oh God we bless your name we call upon you can't do anything until you come bless us now in Jesus name we pray amen Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. And then Jesus was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. 
But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I want to talk about what man lives by. What man lives by. I read that if you put a buzzard in a pen, six or eight square feet with an open top, the bird, even though he has the ability to fly, will remain a prisoner. The reason is that a buzzard always begins a flight from the ground with a run of 10 to 12 feet without space to run as is his habit. He will not even try to fly but will remain a prisoner for life with that open top. Say the ordinary bat that flies around at night can take, cannot take off from a level place. If it is placed on the floor, on the ground, on a flat surface, all it can do is shuffle around helplessly until it reaches some slight angle from which it can throw itself into the air, then takes off like a flash. In many ways, there are a lot of people like the buzzard and the bat. They struggle about with all their problems and frustrations, trials and tribulations, heartbreaks and heartaches. Stressed out, strung out, and on the verge of giving out. Not realizing that the power of God to withstand every situation is inborn within you. And the answer to life's most difficult problems is just above you. Not realizing that the power of God to withstand every situation is inborn within you and the answer to life's most difficult problems is just above you. My brother and sister, I, I know we are saved, sanctified, and on our way to heaven. But we might as well admit it today. Every now and then, every once in a while, we find ourselves like that buzzard in that bat. We can't get up, we can't take off, and we can't get out. You and I both must face it. It is not a piece of cake to live a consecrated, fully committed life which reflects the life of Jesus Christ. Once we are saved, God expects us to live lives that bring forth fruits of righteousness. Once we are saved, God expects us to live lives that bring forth fruits of righteousness. In other words, wherever we are in whatsoever the situation is, our witness must reflect the attitudes and actions that show we have been changed. Say so another way, we can't sing Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, and leave out, oh, what a change in my life. We ought not sing Amazing Grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me and leave out I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. What's the point of singing? I'm on the battlefield 
for the Lord and leave out, I promise him that I will serve him till I die. I, I, I tell you, I, I, our lives ought to reflect the attitudes and actions that show we've been changed. Oh yeah, I stopped by today to tell you, to let you know that it is impossible to live like a saint all by yourself. No matter how hard you're trying, you just cannot live a life of integrity and uprightness by your lonesome. Because hmm. no, the verse says, Jesus was led by the Spirit from the high and holy experience of blessings at the Jordan, Jesus was led into the wilderness for testing. Notice now, Jesus was not tempted so that the father could learn something about his son. For the father had already given Jesus his divine approval. Jesus was not tested to prove that he could conquer. Jesus was tempted so that every creature in heaven, on earth, or under the earth might know that he is the conqueror. Jesus was tempted so that he could expose Satan and his devious tactics for what they are. Jesus was tempted so that he might let us know that Satan was, is, and shall be defeated. And because Jesus is a conqueror, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In this wilderness experience, you and I are being given a, a glimpse into the human side of Jesus. You see, Jesus was both God and man. And his human side had the same characteristics as us. The Bible says Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Church, if, if we are going to have success if we are going to survive this Christian journey, if we are going to make it on this side, this Christian world, we have to remember, first of all, that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. When we become saved, we receive the gift of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So the question is not whether we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit to empower us. The question is, who is doing the leading? You are the Holy Spirit. Has God ever blessed you with a little extra something? And along come somebody out of the blue just in the nick of time to share your blessing, you had no intention on sharing. And all you could say was, I had other intentions, but I'm glad I had it to give. Did you notice you are not doing the leading? If we follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, we will end up where God wants us to be, Miss Mary, if we follow the dictates of the Holy Spirit, we will end up doing what God wants done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Deacon Lester, if we submit to the teachings of the Holy Spirit, we will end up learning what God wants to teach. The second thing to notice in this text is that as we yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit, secondly, we will encounter Satan. We will 
in your own might. We will be met by Satan. The, 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 the first of these three temptations involve the love of God and the will of God. Satan says, if you are the son of God, since you are God's beloved son, why, why doesn't your father feed you? Why does he put you into this terrible wilderness? This temptation sounds like Satan's words to Eve in Genesis 3. It's a subtle suggestion that our father does not love us. Don't let Satan mess you up when trouble comes your way. Just because trouble comes your way does not mean that God does not love you. It might mean he loves you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, 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 Satan is also saying to Jesus, use your divine powers to meet your own needs. When we put our physical needs ahead of our spiritual needs, we sin. Let me see, say, say, say this another way. When we allow circumstances to dictate our actions, instead of following God's will, we sin. Let me, let me say another way. When, when, when we allow trouble on every side to determine our actions, instead of following God's will, we sin. Hmm. Jesus could have turned the stones into bread. But he could have been exercising his power separately of the Father's will. But remember, Jesus was led by the Spirit, and he came to obey the Father. Satan, 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 Satan never gives up or gives in. If you get a break from Satan, don't ever think he's going for good. Yeah, no, he, he, he don't, he don't operate. He, he, even when he knows he, he can't steal your soul, he still tries to steal your witness and your joy. Well, I've learned you, you, you got to be careful because when, 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 when trouble comes, when, 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 when sickness comes, when something comes and steal your joy, you, you don't want to witness, uh, you don't want to talk about the goodness of the Lord. But all oh, I've learned now, every time trouble comes, uh, it might be a good time to start talking about the goodness of the Lord. I heard Satan say to Jesus. If you are the son of God, you, you, did, did you get that? If you are, Satan is always casting doubt. Are you really a child of God? Does God require all that? Did God really tell you to Reach out like that. Who are they to you? What's in it for you? Where is your reward? You're being led to encourage somebody. But Satan wants you to destroy somebody. Did, 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 did you get that? You, you, you're being led to encourage somebody. But Satan wants you to destroy somebody. You'll be led to build up somebody. But Satan wants you to tear down somebody. You'll be led to minister to somebody in need. But Satan wants you to magnify their faults. Uh, he, he wants you to point at their faults, uh, uh, to talk about their faults as if you don't have any faults of your own. We are trying to grow in the admonition of the Lord and Satan is trying to stunt our growth. 
you're trying to love folks with that kind of in spite of the love and Satan is trying to get us to remember why we shouldn't even be around them. We are trying to not only forgive but do the best we can to forget and Satan keeps planting those seeds of conflict. And if we are not careful, we will start acting sinful, saying sinful stuff, thinking sinful thoughts, saying stuff like, I'm not speaking till they speak to me. I know we are both going to the same place, but they could drive their little raggedy car sometimes. I'm not doing another thing because I don't feel like they appreciate it. I'm not working on any more committees, any more ministries. With them, they don't do things like I do things. We forget who we are ultimately serving by helping somebody along the way. We felt led to do this or that, but after we have labored, when we are almost through, when we have gone over and above the call of duty, Satan shows up and tries to undo what we have been led to do. So if you're going to live this life like God has called us to live it, then we uh, have to realize the Holy Spirit dwells in us and that we are going to stumble upon Satan. We are going to be met by Satan. And then third and finally, we are encouraged by the word of God. Jesus rebuked Satan with the word. He said, it is written. Everything we need to know about life is right here in the word of God. The whole Bible is God inspired word because it is inspired and trustworthy. We should read it and apply it to our lives. Uh, yeah, we should read it and apply it to our lives. We should read it and apply it to our lives. Oh yeah, the Bible still shines bright and clear. It not only informs us how to be a good husband or wife, a good parent or a good citizen, it not only teaches us good business principles, good morals, and good taste. It gives us a new outlook on life. I call it a heavenly viewpoint, which no other book in the world can give. The Bible brings God to us. Yeah, it brings heaven to earth. The Bible it brings hope to confusion and grace into our life of sin and sorrow. The Bible tells us of the thoughts of God, his thoughts of peace toward us and not of evil. The Bible really reveals the hidden and deep things of God's glory and peace. Yeah, it is the Lord's staff which covers us in every trouble and distress. It is our spiritual meat and drink, which nourishes and strengthens us every day of our lives. And greatest of all, it unites us with our Savior. The Bible begins with a garden and ends with a city. The Bible starts with a morning followed by night. It ends with a day that shall know no night. The Bible contains the mind of God. It contains the state of man. 
It contains the way of salvation. It contains the doom of sinners. And it contains the happiness of believers. I come by to tell you, its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding. Its histories are true. And its decisions are unbeatable. Read it to be wise. If you want to be safe, read it. If you want to, yeah, practice it, be holy, read it. It contains light to direct you and food to support you and comfort to cheer you. Yeah, Lord, it is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, and the soldier's sword, and the Christian charter. Here, paradise is restored. Uh, heaven open uh, and the gates of hell closed. I come by to tell you the word of God is our standard for testing everything else that claims to be true. The word of God is our safeguard against false teachings uh, and our source of knowledge about how we can be saved. The word of God equips us to live for him, yeah. The word of God uh, is our weapon against the tricks, yeah, of Satan. Yes, uh, this world's power and uh, all of its temptations uh, surround us daily. But we must, yeah, be surrendered to God's will and invite the power of the Holy Spirit to not only lead us, but to keep us daily. Lord, keep me day by day, not week by week. Lord, keep me day by day, not month by month. But Lord, keep me day by day. I wonder, is there anybody, yeah, ever had to pray that prayer? Lord, keep me day by day. I believe the hymn writer knew what he was talking about when he put pen to paper and the words oh to be kept by Jesus kept yeah by the power divine I know last Sunday we talked about being kept yeah by the Lord and I wonder is there anybody in here and say yes I'm kept by the Lord had it not been for the Lord where wouldn't I be I come by to tell you yes we are in the wilderness but the wilderness does not have to be in us as long as you have Jesus working on the outside oh what a chain somebody here today already knows what a difference it makes day in and day out when Jesus is on the inside I know Jesus it makes a difference Jesus it makes a difference in your life don't get fooled you may be just getting by but I don't know about you yeah Lord I don't want to just be getting by I want all that the Lord has for me yeah Lord because he knows I like that he knows he knows he knows he knows thank you he knows what we go through and he is able say able He's able to keep us from falling and to present us, yeah, before his presence with exceeding joy. How do you know, Pastor? Because like Paul, I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that 
sin which I have committed unto him against that day. Great God Almighty, I come by to tell you, Jesus got hungry, but he didn't. But don't forget, he's able to feed multitudes. Jesus got thirsty, but I haven't forgotten that he is the water of life. Great God Almighty, yes, he grew weary, but don't forget, yeah, he is our rest. He prayed, yet he hears our prayers. He wept, yet dries our tears. He was sold for 30 pieces of silver, yet redeems the world. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and yet he is the good shepherd. He was put to death, yet raises the dead. He was put to death, yeah, because he died for your sins and my sins. I'm talking about Jesus. What's his name? His name is Jesus. There's power in his name. There's wonder working power in his name. I don't know about you, but every now and then, all I can say, Jesus. Jesus, every now and then, uh, my burdens get heavier, my storms got me, I, I cannot see my way, but oh, when I say, Jesus, 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 and I got a feeling I'm not the only one up in here, anybody had to call him lately, anybody, to call his name. Uh, I'm talking about Jesus. The Roman government uh, tried to intimidate him. Uh, false religion tried to shut him up. Uh, the devil tried to kill him. But I got good news. Uh, all fail. Uh, even death was no match for him. Uh, Jesus is the command center of the galaxy. See, uh, two sparrows cost only a penny, but not even one of them can do it without our fathers knowing it. Uh, I come by to tell you, whatever it is you're dealing with, uh, whatever it is you're going through, uh, I come by to tell you, the Lord knows, uh, the Lord knows, uh, the Lord knows, uh, the Lord knows, the Lord knows. Uh, the Lord knows and that's where I get my joy that's where I get my strength because the Lord knows he knows he knows he knows he knows when I don't understand he knows when I can't see my way he knows when I can't figure it out he knows when I don't feel spiritual he knows when I don't feel like calling his name he knows yeah Anybody, oh, anybody, yeah, glad that he knows he occupies the Oval Office. Don't worry about Trump or anybody else. The Lord is still in charge. The Lord still got the world in the hollow of his hand. But I come by to tell you, you got to pray for him. The Bible said pray for those who have charge over you because the decisions they make affect us. Yeah, you may not have voted for him. It may not be your choice, but I come by that you got to pray for him. Pray that the Lord will use him. Pray that the Lord will change him. Pray that the Lord will use him. Don't you know the Lord can use a sinner to do what he want to do? You remember Paul? 
Paul destroyed, came to folks house, dragged them out of the house and beat them up. But the Lord one day saved Paul. I come by to tell you, when you look at your life and you look at my life, if the Lord saved us, yet yeah, Lord, he can save anybody. Because when you think about it, when the Lord saved us, he had to reach way, 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 way down. That's why I'm so glad uh, God arms ain't too short uh, to reach me where I am. His arms are just long enough to reel me in. Uh, his arms are just powerful enough to hold me uh, like a baby, like a mama holds a baby. Uh, his arms are soft enough where they comfort me in the midnight hour. His arms are long enough where they keep me walking day by day day uh, in faith uh, is on oh yes Lord I'm talking about Jesus he stopped the waves with a word uh, he spoke and a tree withered uh, he spoke again and a basket became a banquet uh, I'm talking about Jesus if you want to see a change in your life uh, Give your life to Jesus, and once you're saved, if you want to see some help along this way, I don't know about you, but I may be pastor, I may be preacher, but I need some help from the Lord. I can't do it. I can't do it unless the Lord, and I come by to tell you, if you need some help, you ought to call him by his name. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed because the Lord, he knows. I'm sorry, I keep coming back there, but I got to say, he knows. Thank you, Lord, for knowing. Thank you, Lord, for where I come. Thank you, Lord, for where I am. Thank you, Lord, for where I, I'm about to go. His name, his name, his name, his name, his name, oh, his name is Jesus. 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 By all means, when you pray for me, call my name. And the best I can do is to pray for you. But when you call Jesus, it's a different situation. When you call Jesus, I got some folks up in here who will tell you what a change has been in their lives since they met Jesus. But they'll tell you, every day hadn't been a sunny day. Uh, yeah, 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 it had not, has not been a cake walk, but all the joy we have with Jesus. The joy. What are you living by? What are you living? you're not living by the word of God I must let you know that you're not living you're just surviving or just not even doing a good job of that you're just really going through the motions until you accept Christ do you call him even for salvation. He's so powerful. He is so loving. What I love about him is that when you come, he don't score you out. He don't mention about how long it's been. He comes saying, I love you. Because you've come, salvation is yours. And then we got to learn how to pray for those who are not saved. 
because we ourselves realize that we weren't born sin. I mean, Savior, Christ, Christians, we were born in sin. We're not born saved. No matter how some folks strut around and looking holier than thou, there was a time, like you and I, they too were on their way to hell. But you got to be careful because Satan, even in your salvation, will make you feel arrogant. Make you think you're better than somebody else. But remember, we are believers, but we are sinners. Saved by grace. I love this analogy, so don't, don't, don't be careful when you calling another pile of dirt something. When all you are is a pile of dirt yourself. So don't let Satan mess you up. I think you ought to, the way, that, the way you brag about your salvation, you be a witness to somebody else. Because sometimes when you brag, it's like you don't know what can get it. But to be a witness, if I testify, be a witness. Because I ain't the first one to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody had to witness to me. So if you witness and I witness. We as a church, we cannot just come here week after week and wait for folks to show up. What are you doing to be a witness? Are you inviting others to come to the place where you worship? When you go to Wiley World, Puppy and Gaius, if you're a little shy, you just ask, ask the Lord to give you. First of all, you, you, you just speak to somebody. And you can ask them, well, are you, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and I attend, or do you, are you a believer? Do you, do you, do you attend church somewhere? That's how that's how. You'll be surprised the individual who say, no, I don't. And you invite them. And they, they, they're so excited that somebody invited them. As the pastor, the shepherd don't get sheep. Sheep get sheep. You got to be talking about the goodness. Look here. You, you may be in the storm of your life. Well. But you ought to be able to stand up in all that you're going through. And realize that God is still God. And, and I can tell somebody else about him even though, I, even though I'm going through myself. So I encourage you to be a witness. Because we, what we live by is the word of God. This Advent, you need to get in a habit of, let this be a start. Don't, don't wait for January 1 to, to, to start your New Year resolutions. You may not see January 1. But now I encourage you to read your Bibles. Have a devotional time every day. And watch what it does. It will strengthen you in ways that you can't even explain. But Satan is going to make you, when, it, when it's time to read, all of, all of a sudden you will get sleepy or too tired or the phone is going to ring. Some calls can wait. I say some calls because sometimes we want to get the hottest, the latest gossip. We don't want to miss so we are. I challenge you. If you really want to see a change in your life in reference to being strengthened, being renewed, I encourage you to feast on God's word every day. I'm through, but I told us in Bible study one time, a young man was getting ready to go off to, to college and he wanted a car. And uh, so time for graduation, the young man was disappointed because all the father did was give him a Bible. He was so disappointed, so he went to college first year. Spring break, he 
Came home and said, Daddy, uh, I thought you would have had a car here for me. So the father said, undoubtedly, you've not read the book. The young man went to his sophomore year, always asking, Daddy, I thought you were going to get me a car. His response was, I th undoubtedly, you've not read the book. Lo and behold, when he decided to read the book, he looked in it. There was a title in there to a brand new car. It was already there had he just read the book. What we are looking for is already here. Just read the book. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Maybe there's somebody here who does not know the Lord as their personal Savior. And you feel the Lord has touched your heart, touched your soul, that you want to give your life to him. If that be the case, we ask you to come. Come as a kind of baptism. Maybe somebody else coming on the Christian experience or by letter. However, the Holy Spirit leads you. We invite you to come now at this time. Jesus cares for me. Jesus cares for me. He proved how much he loved me when he hung. On Calvary, yeah. whenever I need a friend, he never failed to step right in. I know, yes, I know. For me, mm. yeah, Jesus cares mm. for me. Jesus cares for me. Yeah, 
for me. You know he proved how much he loved me. Oh, when he, when he died, when he died on Yes, I do, church. Ooh, I, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. He cares for me.